Hi there, I'm Daniel Erasmus and I've been asked to share with you a couple of thoughts and give you some guidance as to what uh, you should remember should you feel that any of your fundamental rights are being affected by your interactions with the South African Revenue Service. Well, firstly, what you really need to pay attention to is some of the key features and provisions that stand out in our very well-known and well-heeled constitution. Now, many of these principles find their way into um, other acts such as the Promotion of Access to Information Act and the Promotion of Administrative Justice Act. And then importantly, when it comes to uh, tax issues, uh, to the application of the Tax Administration Act, which really governs the uh, relationship between you, the taxpayer, and SARS. Although these acts here that I've just shown you are always subject to the uh, Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. And what is important to remember right at the beginning of the Constitution, it says that um, the all laws are subject not only to the Constitution, but to the rule of law. And in addition to that, any conduct or uh, law that is inconsistent with the con with the Constitution is then deemed to be invalid unless a number of uh, highly technical exceptions apply. So if we were to go and look at the Constitution and you would look at the beginning section and the right to privacy is dealt with in section 14 which says everyone has the right to privacy which includes the right not to have their person or home searched their property uh, searched, their possessions seized, or the privacy of their communications infringed. Now, those are very broad rights that you have. So before SARS uh, pulls the trigger to do any kind of um, invasive search or uh, seize, seizing of possessions, there are a number of hoops that they first need to jump through. And if you ever are the subject of a search and seizure or anticipate that that might happen, it would be a very good idea to obtain the necessary advice so that these um, specific rights are carefully monitored. So typically in a SARS investigation, they are looking to see whether or not you've complied with the taxing provisions and to the extent that you haven't and they believe that it might be negligence or intention, there are normally um, uh, penalties that would be applicable, but in instances, and particularly where there are large sums of money involved, they may actually try and take that a step further and press criminal charges uh, against you, the taxpayer, or you as a representative of the company that they are investigating or the entity that they're investigating. Now, to what extent are they allowed to do that? Once again, it would be very important to get the appropriate legal representation and the short answer is to the extent that they've obtained information under their broader investigative powers for civil purposes in order to determine your taxes and potential penalties, um, there is a restriction on them being entitled to use that information against you in criminal charges. Uh, and they tend to use the criminal charge whip, um, as I said, in, in larger audits as a means of threatening the taxpayers so that... Um, they get them not to resist because no one wants to face a, a criminal charge. It's a, it's a horrible thing to have to face. So when it comes to any kind of uh, information that is being sought from you, it is very important that you as advisors on behalf of your clients or clients or uh, taxpayers themselves make it very clear that you are giving the information under compulsion by virtue of the powers given to SARS so that you can tee up the defenses that I've just discussed with you. Now, um, uh, just a, another very broad and important constitutional principle is that to the extent that they are now relying on evidence to pursue criminal charges, uh, and they've transgressed what I've just explained to you, there is a provision in the Constitution that says that if the use of that evidence would uh, result in an unfair trial, the court has the uh, power to exclude that evidence. And in, in the situation that I've just discussed with you, most likely they, that is what would happen here, depending on the facts and circumstances, and which is why it would be important at a very early stage for you to try and get hold of the required um, 
assistance from specialists in the know. Then you also have the right to information. So whatever information is held by the state, there are uh, certain rules. And as I pointed out to you earlier, there is the promotion of uh, Access to Information Act, which contains detailed rules as to how you can obtain the information. But that information is, is important for you to access to determine out of which field is this audit coming? What are you facing? What information is SARS working off so that you are in a position to address that properly? And that, that kind of segues into the next fundamental right that you have, which is just administrative action. And, and any action by SARS must be lawful, reasonable, and procedurally fair. And so at the conclusion of their audit, they have to, in terms of the Tax Administration Act, provide you with a letter of findings in terms of Section 42 of that Act. And therein, they have to set out all the facts and the law that they are relying upon in reaching the conclusion which they're telling you is going to trigger a revised assessment. And this is all before they issue the revised assessment. You're entitled to access that information and respond fully. And if they don't do that, uh, we recently obtained a judgment against SARS setting aside all the assessments that were raised against the taxpayer because SARS had failed to comply with the provisions of Section 42 and failed to issue a letter of findings beforehand. And this is a regular problem uh, amongst um, SARS officials and investigations. Then lastly, um, just in terms of Section 195 of the Constitution, um, it is expected of any agency, such as the Revenue Agency, the South African Revenue Services, it is expected of them at all times to adhere to the values and the principles in the Constitution. And in this regard, under Section 195, it expressly states, a high standard of professional ethics must be promoted and maintained. Um, the services must be provided impartially, fairly, equitably, and without bias. Public administration must be accountable. So everything must be underlined by reason. It must be rational, and they must be accountable for what they're doing. Transparency must be fostered and they must provide you with accessible and accurate information. And then, um, and so that goes to the very heart of what I mentioned uh, to you earlier in terms of being entitled to access information from SARS. So I hope that that gives you some kind of uh, a brief introduction into some of the fundamental rights that you should be aware of should you undergo any type of investigation because it's at that point that uh, your rights are potentially being transgressed and you're entitled to enforce those rights. And if you don't, then unfortunately you will lose them. Now, the um, Great Soft organization is um, promoting a insurance policy which uh, goes specifically to the heart of providing you with the necessary representation at a very low premium every month. So should you ever be the subject of an audit or an investigation, then the policy would kick in and it would then pay for the expertise that is required to hold your hand and to pay for your accountants to assist in preparing the matter and making sure that your rights are fully adhered to and you come out the other end as unscathed as possible. Until next time, goodbye.